Hey YouTube, welcome to another video. Today we're going to be talking about DropBear, the uh, the drop-in replacement for OpenSSH. Uh, why you would want to use DropBear, how to use DropBear, and basically just the general advantages of using DropBear. And before we go ahead and get started, I did want to mention two things in the meantime. Uh, the first being that I am starting a forum for uh, for people that have questions or problems while following one of my tutorials. Uh, if you need help, you you can um, register an account on my forum and just uh, under the video topic, you can just go ahead and post your question there or the um, the output of something that broke while you were uh, following my tutorial. And uh, I or someone else in the community will probably respond to you pretty quickly. And uh, yeah, I also just wanted to take a second to say thank you to all my new subscribers and uh, people that are just showing general report, uh, support for the channel. But uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get started. All right, first of all, what is DropBear? Basically, DropBear is a drop-in replacement for OpenSSH, and uh, the whole point to using DropBear is that it uses less resources uh, than OpenSSH. And this is especially useful in embedded environments, such as routers, uh, fridges, you know, Devices, IoT devices basically that have a limited uh, amount of resources of RAM and uh, CPU. But uh, yeah, if you are just an inquisitive person like myself, you may find yourself uh, just wanting to install DropBear uh, just to test it out, you know, to see if it truly is a uh, drop in replacement for OpenSSH. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and get started, shall we? Alright, first of all, we're going to have to have a uh, remote device that we can install DropBear on. Therefore, I'm just going to be deploying a VPS for this tutorial. I'm going to be using Linode. As you can see, Linode uh, loaded up here. Now, if you uh, if you're interested in deploying a VPS for the first time, feel free to uh, use my referral links in the description. Um, some of them will give you free credit, so you could just try this out for uh, free. But uh, yeah, I also have past videos if you're looking on, uh, if you're looking how to uh, deploy a VPS for the first time. But uh, yeah, I'm just going to go through this pretty fast. Select Ubuntu 18.04. I'll go Newark, New Jersey. Nanode, $5 plan a month. Put a, call this drop bear. Now, uh, you're going to want to put a password in the, uh, the root password field that you're going to remember. Just because uh, this is going to be coming handy, you'll see. Uh, I'm going to also put my SSH key on here for my Mac. And I'm going to skip backups just because I don't need them. And I'm going to enable the private IP option because it's free and why not. Alright, you're going to want to click create. And then it should be done in about, I don't know, 40 seconds I think Linode uh, averages. Use uh, SSH here. Just because we are going to have to uh, shut OpenSSH off, which is going to terminate any SSH connections, and you will lose access to the device. But if you're using a console, uh, this is not this isn't using SSH. So basically, uh, the connection won't be terminated. Anyways, we're gonna go ahead and log in with that root password reset uh, before we deploy the VPS, and we're logged in now. Now it's time to install DropBear. Before you um before you should, before you install any software on your devices, you're always going to uh you're gonna to want to update the packages first. This just ensures that you're gonna be getting the uh, the latest versions and all your packages are up to date. And you know if you do this often enough, it shouldn't take more than maybe 15, 20 seconds at a time. And as you can see, I just deployed this server here and. Uh, the Ubuntu images, the Ubuntu image Linode provided, uh, it's already pretty much almost done. But uh, yeah, looks like we got a few more seconds to wait here. Tick tock, tick tock. Don't sue me, tick tock. All right. Once your packages are done updating. You can go ahead and install DropBear, <clears throat> and in order to do that, you simply run app install DropBear. As you can see, I've already had it installed. And then, next up, we're going to want to edit the configuration for DropBear. 
Now the default config is going to be in slash Etsy default drop bear. And as you can see, my file is blank, but yours is most likely not going to be blank. But it doesn't really matter because there's only two lines you have to edit. The first one being uh, no underscore start equals zero. This is what it should look like. I believe it comes as no start equals one, which uh, leaves it disabled if you try to start it. So you, you want that to be no underscore start equals zero. And the second port being or second part being uh, drop bear underscore port equals what port you want uh, to run uh, SSH on. And I'm just going to leave that as the standard de facto 22. All right. After you finish this, you can go ahead and close the file and then run service SSH stop because we want to uh, replace SSH with drop bear. <clears throat> and then you're going to want to run service drop bear start. And let's see the unit file, source configuration file, or drop ins. Yeah, so that's just because um, you know I edited in, I edited in my own drop bear config rather than using the one that was provided, and that was just because I deleted it and uh, I couldn't figure out how to get it back again. But um, just keep in mind that if you have the uh, the standard default file, you just want to edit those two lines I showed you and just keep it like that. Do not delete the file. Anyways, we can go ahead and see the uh, status of drop error by running service drop error status. And as you can see, it is active and running. We can go ahead and open up a normal terminal to go ahead and try to access the server over drop error now. And you can uh, access the server normally with SSH. So I'm going to run or SSH root at the server IP, which is right here. And as you can see here, we have a remote host identification change. And that's because I believe um, I deleted the known host file on my Mac. So uh, you don't have to worry about this. It's just because uh, it couldn't match the, the local identity of the server and the remote identity uh, from previous authentications. But yeah, don't, don't worry about this. And then to fix this, I just have to delete that file. All right, and we're going to want to SSH back into the server. Type yes, and then I'm going to decrypt my encrypted SSH key. And as you can see, we are now in the server over uh, drop bear. And to verify, we could switch back to SSH, and uh, we'll, put S we'll put normal SSH on port 80 just so we can show the difference. I'm going to run, or actually, I'm going to just edit the default SSH file in SSH D config, change that to port 80, uh, service SSH start. Okay, that is weird. Um, haven't seen that one. Anyways, we're, the, uh, the path's just messed up on the server, so we just have to give it the absolute path rather than the uh, relative path, as you see there. Anyways, specify the absolute path. You probably won't have to. SSH start. And as you can see, SSH has now started. And it is also running. So I'm going to go ahead and open up a new terminal here. Root at server IP. And this time, instead of port 22, the default, let's specify port 80. And as you can see, we are now in the server here. And... Um, yeah, so this is over port 80, open SSH, and then this uh, terminal here is connected to the server port 22 drop bear. So it's pretty cool, pretty cool. Um, but yeah, there's a bunch of different things you can do with drop bear here, and as I said, it uses less resources. So that's uh, it's pretty useful if you're working on embedded systems that have you know limited resources and... Uh, yeah, basically, it's just a small computer that, you know, you still need to access. So why why use all the functionality of OpenSSH when Drop Bear uses less resources and complete, can completely replace it? Anyways, I hope this video quest, or uh, quenched your thirst for um, configuring and installing and running Drop Bear. Uh, if this video helped you at all, uh, I'd appreciate a like on the video. If it didn't, leave a dislike. And if you ha run into any problems... Just leave a comment on my forum and I will definitely get back to you. Thanks for watching.